What we're going to be looking at here are convertible bonds interest expense when they're issued between interest payment dates and we're going to be looking at the interest expense here for the first interest payment date on this bond. And this could be for any bonds here but I'm just going to say this is what we would have to do when we have convertible bonds. Okay so for example here Corporation A issued six million dollars worth of bonds here at 10 percent. They're going to be a 10-year convertible bonds and they were issued at 98 or 98 percent of par here on 6-1-X-1 and the bonds here are dated on 4-1-X-1. The interest payment dates each year here are on 4-1 and 10-1 each year, semi-annual interest payments. Now these bonds were issued two months after the stated date on the bond here. The stated date here is 4-1-X-1 and they were issued here in 6-1-X-1. So this is what we're going to have to deal with in this example, this where the bonds here is issued between the interest payment dates and and two months after the stated date in this case. So on 4.1 X2 here, $2 million or 33% of these bonds were converted here into common stock. Now we're not going to be concerned with that. What we're really going to look at is the interest that we have to pay on this bond and we're going to look at the first interest payment date. Okay so uh, number two here our bond is going to be at a discount and it's going to be amortized semi-annually here this discount using the straight line method and for this example we're going to record the interest expense here at the first interest payment date here on 10.1x1. We're not going to be concerned about the conversion we're in concerned about this interest expense. Okay so the first thing we have to do is go up here and we have to use this straight line method here to determine the bond amortization on a monthly basis. And the reason we do that is this bond amortization of this discount, that's going to be charged against the interest expense. So what we have to do here is we, we look at the total months here. Well, there's 10 years here, 12 months per year, so we got 120 months um, on this bond here. But the bonds here are dated on 4-1-X-1 and they're issued here on 6-1-X-1. So that's going to be a two months after after um, the issue or the date here, the date here, the bond. So the months that are remaining, that's the key here to amortize. Well, we have 120 months total here, but we have to subtract out those two months here because they were issued two months afterwards here. So we have a total of 118 months that we have to amortize. So that's the key here. So to determine our amortization on a monthly basis. So first our bond par value, well, we knew that was $6 million here. The issue price here, uh, well, that's 98% on a par here of the six million, so that equates to five million eight hundred eighty thousand dollars. So the difference here gives us that bond discount here of one hundred and twenty thousand. On uh, we have to amortize here on this bond here. So looking at a discount on a monthly basis, well, we have the hundred and twenty thousand, and that we divide by the months remaining here that we have to amortize one hundred eighteen. So it gives us our discount on a monthly basis here of one thousand sixteen dollars. And that's what we're going to amortize again per month here. And that's what we're going to include here on in the interest expense. Okay, so for our example here, uh, the interest expense as of 10.1x1, that's that first interest payment date here after it was issued here. So let's look at it here in, in these terms. This is the key here. The issuer of the bonds receives the interest accrued from the last interest payment date. In this case, it's when it would have been paid here on 41X1 here, the stated date here on the bond, to the issue date here, 61X1 here. So we've got two months that um, the issuer of the bond here is going to receive interest in advance, or the buyer of the bond is going to pay this interest here to the issuer here. And then the buyer is going to get it paid back here on the next uh, interest payment date. So buyer has to pay the issuer here and we're looking at it from the issuer's perspective here two months interest in advance essentially. So this here we got two bond here two months accrued interest 4-1 through 6-1 here from looking at it from the issuer's perspective here so and that would be two twelfths of a year here two months, two twelfths of a year. So the accrued interest, well we got six million dollars here that we have to pay on interest, ten percent uh, annually here, but we're looking at it for two twelfths or two months here, that would be a hundred thousand dollars. We could also look at it just as six million here times semi-annual of five percent interest here, but we're looking at it on an annual basis here over 
two months here. So we got that $100,000 that we received here in advance from the purchasers of these bonds here. And that we're going to have to set up as an interest payable here on our balance sheet here. We, we credit our interest payable here for bond interest for $100,000. We received that in advance. Okay, and then what's going to happen here we're going to pay that back to the bondholders or the pur purchasers of the bond at the next interest full interest payment date so let's look at our um, our accounts here so let's start with our cash account here for that first bond or semi-annual interest payment again we have six million here at 10 percent interest per year divided by semi-annually divided by two here that's going to give us three hundred thousand dollars here of the interest payment here per uh, semi-annual interest or six month interest payment here three hundred thousand dollars that's also a five percent semi-annually here times six million dollars however you want to look at it uh, ten percent annually divided by two or five percent semi-annually but it's over that six million dollars worth of bond uh, bonds that have interest that has to be paid on them so what is going on here with this cash payment here, that full semi-annual payment here of $300,000, we're going to pay that to the bondholders. So what they're going to receive here is those two months that they uh, paid here in advance plus the four months interest for the period. So a total of six months interest. So that's what the bondholders are going to receive. They actually paid two months in advance uh, because they that's just the way these bonds work here when they purchase them between interest payment dates. The issuer receives that uh, whatever the difference is at the difference between the uh, stated date and the issued date here the issuer receives that uh, interest payment in advance and then at the first interest payment date here they pay it all back to the bond holders. Okay so we would have credited our cash account or reduced that here by three hundred thousand dollars. Then we had this interest payable here that we set up because we received that hundred thousand or let's look at it at accrued interest here for those four one through six one that was at two months here so that would be two sixths of the semi-annual interest payment here of three hundred thousand that equals the hundred thousand that's what we calculated up here so we would have credited that interest payable here for a hundred thousand dollars that's at the, uh, that six one issue date here now comes down ten one and this is we're looking at this cash payment here on ten one that first uh, interest payment date here. So we would have uh, debited it out or reduced that interest payable by a hundred thousand dollars here. We have the credit here to our cash that we paid out to the bondholders of three hundred thousand. So what we would go, the balance goes to interest expense here on the income statement. So we would debit that here for two hundred thousand dollars. Now that's for the interest alone. So that interest expense, that's here from six one through 10-1 here. That's that four month period up until that first interest payment date here. So we got four sixths of that 300 or four of the six months here of the $300,000 annual or semi annual interest payment that equals $200,000. So we debit our interest expense on our income statement here for that. Uh, four months here at two hundred thousand dollars so the other only other thing we have to deal with now that we've taken care of our reduced our interest payable that interest we received in advance we paid out the total a semi-annual payment here to the bondholders and then we recognize the difference here as our interest expense on our income statement now the only other thing we have to deal with is this discount here to the bonds payable and I'm not showing the uh, bonds payable all I'm showing is that discount because we calculated that we would have debited that here it's a contra liability account but we would have debited that here for hundred twenty thousand dollars based on the discount amount here now uh, because we have to amortize that discount down here we have four months that we're amortizing here so that's from that uh, six one here date through ten one those are those four months at a thousand sixteen dollars per month here that equates to four thousand sixty four dollars so that's from six one here through ten one and that's that discount we're amortizing here and we're recognizing that here as interest expense on our income statement so our discount here we started out with a debit here of one hundred twenty thousand but at this first payment date we have to reduce it here we credit that here for four thousand sixty four dollars the discount that we're amortizing and then the debit 
the balance here goes to or the debit goes to interest expense here for four thousand sixty four dollars okay so this takes care of our example here where we issued these bonds between interest payment dates here and I'm, I was looking at it as a convertible bond but it can be any bond here but when you're doing that just remember here the purchaser of the bond pays that initial int that that accru what we call accrued interest here between the uh, uh, stated date here and the issue date here on the bond the um, buyer of the bonds here pays that to the seller or the issuer of the bonds and then the seller or the issuer of the bonds pays the buyer back those in this case it was that two months interest plus whatever oh, the total full semi-annual interest payment in this case they received that two months that they paid in advance back here and they also received interest for the next four months so they received the total here of six months interest by doing that it's a little bit um, technical here but uh, just remember you have to set up that interest payable for that amount here that was accrued and then when that first payment date comes you just reduce your interest payable by that amount and then uh, you, of course, pay out your cash payment for that first semi-annual interest, but what you recognize here as interest expense is just the balancing amount here between your interest payable and the cash account. So we add a credit here to cash of 300000 debit here to interest payable 100000 so we need the other debit amount here, interest expense here on the income statement of 200000 for the balancing entry. Okay, so that takes care of uh, this accrued interest here, issuing these bonds between interest payment dates.